This is Can You Teach Us, the show that takes teachers out of their comfort zone and into our classroom and puts them to the test. This lesson, science, with our very own science teacher from K-12, Matt. How are you doing, Matt? I'm doing very well, David. Thank you That's for having me. I tell us a little bit about yourself. I've been teaching for about 15 years now, uh, teaching online uh, in Indiana. Absolutely love it, and uh, I'm very excited for my students to get to, to get to see this. They were, they were thrilled <laughs> to hear about this opportunity. Matt here is a science whiz, but can he pass this quiz? We're going to go through three games, each testing his speed, know-how, and ask the ultimate question, can you teach us? I'll award points along the way, which will be worth something to someone somewhere. Let's start the games. Our first game, Quick Draw. Matt, you'll have three minutes to explain as many scientific topics as possible, but oh. there's a catch. Oh, are you no. ready? I, oh, I think so. Challenges are given at random with the option to pass, and points are gonna be awarded for each concept that you define. I'm going to be deciding whether or not you do it as someone that knows absolutely nothing about <laughs> science. So it's gonna work somehow. Nice. Every time that I decide that you explain it well, you'll hear a little, and then we can move on to the next one. So, cool. Cool. ask yourself, are you ready to get a long little doggy? Yes, yes, 100 times yes. Three minutes on the clock. Let's go. Explain photosynthesis using only hand gestures. <laughs> okay. Oh, modern art, I love it. Perfect. Define gravity in exactly seven words. A force based on distance and mass. Perfect. Draw and label the water cycle on the chalkboard, but with your eyes closed. Close your eyes. Okay. What, what's what's happening here? This is precipitation. Uh huh. I'm gonna put a P there. Okay. Uh, so then, uh, so then it's it's going to be in the uh, in the in the reservoirs here. Okay. So we're gonna have an ocean. I'm gonna draw an ocean. Uh, uh, let's see. We're gonna have to have a sun somewhere that's going to be evaporating this. That is amazing. So we've got sun. the sun. Uh, you've got uh, water evaporating out of the reservoirs uh -huh. and condensing into clouds uh, in the atmosphere. Uh, and if my calculations are correct, there should be some precipitation over on this side. Beautiful, and I love the artwork. Um, explain the scientific right. method. Not bad. While patting your head and rubbing your stomach. <clears throat> so uh, first, I, I have to have some curiosity. I need to have a question in mind, something that, uh, that I need to investigate. Uh, I'm gonna do a little research and investigation, and I just, am I supposed to be rubbing or patting, David? Oh. I have All right, so, uh, so then we've got, uh, uh, so you're, you've, you've done some research, you've done some, uh, some, some thinking and, and prep work. You th then make a hypothesis that you can test. Uh, identify your variables, set up the experiment, perform the experiment, uh, and then uh, and then at the end, evaluate your results and decide if you're gonna keep doing it. I love it. Sing us through the life cycle. The life cycle of? Life. I was born, then I lived, I found a mate, we reproduced, and then I died. <laughs> okay, <laughs> come up. Come up with a new mnemonic phrase for the planets in order. Oh gosh. It's um, a puppy. Hmm. My very excited mother jumped straight north up. Oh no no P? Oh, no, P doesn't exist oh, anymore. Oh, no, P, oh. Yeah, dwarf planet, dwarf planet. That's gravity good. Is, you... Gravity is not large enough to round itself and clear the pathway of its orbit. Also, its orbit is a little uh, cattywampus from the other planets. That's why Pluto yeah. doesn't exist. That's why we don't count it as a planet anymore. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's tough, tough. I learned a lot. That's good, you did it just in time. Did I get an extra one for the Pluto thing? You know what, let me count the score and see what oh, I got on. you. Come on, judges, judges. I'm gonna give you 800 points. Yes, because, let's go. Because you explained Pluto, and I love that. And your drawing was amazing. Cool. I don't cool. know what you're gonna do with those points, but we'll find out by the end of the game, maybe. I don't know. How do you think you, you did during uh, this? Messed up Uranus and Neptune, uh, mm. as far as the order. I think I said north up. Uh, uh, but outside of that, that was a lot of fun. I, uh, I think my art skills are pretty good. Yeah, maybe we should have had you on the art episode. Maybe, hey, next time, next time. I feel like we're ready for game two, huh? I think so, I think so, with my 800 points in hand. Remember there's 800 points, they're gonna yeah, come in yeah. handy. Oh, I'm gonna remember. <laughs> <laughs> Our next game is called 
the thing. <laughs> oh. You're gonna explain a science topic using these props or things, if you will, and I'm gonna give you a prompt and you're gonna use the objects in front of you to tell us about it. So, Matt, which one of these prompts do you wanna choose? Explain simple machines with popsicle sticks, rubber bands, and a ping pong ball. Act out the rock cycle in 30 seconds using props like a bowl of sand, a rock, and water. Or using puppets to explain how ecosystems work. Which one of those do you want to do? Uh, David, I, I think my students would very much want me to pick uh, demonstrate the rock cycle. And yeah. I'm sure they're going to yeah, love it. Are you ready? I think so, yeah. Let's bring out the things and put 30 seconds on the clock. Are you ready? Let's start. <laughs> So let's see, I got 30 seconds. So I'm taking these sediments. I'm supposed to act, not talk, I'll just mm -hmm. act. <gasps> wow, okay, okay. You're smashing rocks, and that's time. Wow. Right. That was a lot of work. Yeah, yeah. So wait, can you explain your thought process? Like, what was each one? What, what were we doing? So uh, so I went for the low-hanging fruit first. I, I grabbed some sediments that were provided for me. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, I just smashed those together and compacted them a bit to make some sedimentary rock. Okay. I, uh, <clears throat> I've been told I have hot breath. Uh, so uh, so I, I used my hot breath and the friction from my hands to try to warm up these rocks as quickly as possible to melt them and turn them into igneous rocks when they refroze. Uh -huh. And then uh, I kind of lost my mind there at the, the last bit and thought, well, for metamorphic, I need, to, uh, I need some heat, I need some violence to get these rocks changed into a new form, uh, hence, uh, hence the, the, the rocks that I smashed on your all's very, very uh, nice uh, table here. There's a lot of violence. A lot of violence, yeah, I apologize. Do you use any props or things in your online teaching when you're in class? Absolutely, uh, absolutely. And uh, the, the lesson I was referencing uh, that my students are gonna be like, why didn't you give Mr. Howell candy, is uh, every year when I teach this lesson online uh, is right after Halloween, so it's great. We all get all, all of our old candy, like the candy you didn't eat, the, the maybe the fruit stuff that you took away from your brother and sister. Oh, and, yeah. uh, and then we do the example where you, you smash the candy together to make the metamorphic rocks. You know, you, you, you break up your Skittles uh, or non-branded candy to, uh, to get some little sediments that you can use to make oh, rocks wow. and things. So, uh, so candy and rocks, oh, that's the, that's the trick. That's wow. the trick. Wow. Yeah. But love props. I love that. <laughs> that's amazing. I have to tell you that I really like the violence in this one. Excellent. Um, so for that alone, let's say a thousand points. Let's a go. thousand points for you. All right, all right, all right. All right. Let's go. So now we're going to move on to our third game. Okay, and there's something that you need to know about me first, I think. Um, I'm a very elegant gentleman of refined we taste. Know. We got a tell. bow tie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so I like to learn a lot about the world and how the world works, but there's some stuff that even I can't grasp. I don't know it. So my question to you, Matt, is do you think that you can take a lesson and make it simple enough that a caveman can learn it? I think I could do that. All yeah. right, let's yeah. bring yeah. out the drums! Matt, me want learn good. You take topic from box and pick one. Teach me using only one syllable words. If need help, use board behind make cave drawing to make easy. If ready, say uh, uh, okay. Which one do you want? We have DNA. We have Artificial intelligence. We have black holes. Black holes. Okay, let's do it. Put two minutes on the clock. Start. Star. Oh. Goes mad. Boom. Oh, boom. Die. Oh, no, die. Oh, shrink. Oh, small. Small. But mad strong, Ooh. mad strong, mad strong. Ah. Oh, and what what happened to Earth? Earth planets, P rock, big rock oh. get pulled to dead star. Oh no! Dead star pull thing closer. Closer is too simple. Pull close, pull close. Oh. 
Oh, and then what happened to when close? When, when, when close turned to noodle? Noodle? Turn to no, no, noodle? T noodle to too. String? String? Small. Get small. Get, 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 get added. Get oh. add. Get add. <laughs> to <laughs> that, big that was the black hole, wasn't it? Yes. That's amazing. Wow. Wow. <sighs> Me learn good. Thank you. Uh. Well, Matt, for, for the acting alone, I feel like that's worth at least 10,000 points. At oh, least. man, I'm killing it. Yeah. I'm killing it. So total, you have about a billion points. That sounds about right. Yeah. I'm not a math teacher, but that sounds about right. <laughs> that sounds about right. And you know what that means, right? Because it's the final game. Oh, all right. And because you put your body on the line, yes. and you gave us yes. everything that you had, your blood, sweat, and tears, mm -hmm. and you have 10 billion points, mm -hmm. that means that you are officially a Can You Teach Us champion, everybody. Hey! Oh, let's go! That's a great job. You did a nice. good job. Nice. Thank you. Now, I have a question for you. How did how did you feel about this experience? Uh, I was really excited leading up to it, and mm -hmm. it has exceeded every expectation. This has been fantastic. Anytime we can put teachers on a stage and like show off what we do, we're so insulated. We, we, we have our classrooms, our kids love us, and our kids know the experience of our teachers. But like getting to like share it with all of you guys, like and be like, have you all see what education is too? Is a uh, is a really cool experience. Like to, for everybody to come together and celebrate that. Yeah, so nice. I felt like I was in your classroom. Is this something that you do? Like, is this kind of close? One hundred percent. One hundred percent. So uh, my the seventh grade class uh, that I have, I told them on their next test, I'll give them an extra credit point if they can use song titles in their answers on their science test. Because we're talking about, you know, uh, the ring of fire, tectonic plates and stuff. We were talking about Johnny Cash. And uh, so it's like, all right, guys, if you all can connect it to music, like, do it. I'll give you extra credit points. Yeah. So, like, being creative, thinking outside the box, like, yeah. that's what school's all about. It's not, not all the, you know, the, the memorization and the, the rote stuff. It's the, it's the making connections and growing your brain and, uh, and exploring the world around you in new and innovative ways. Wow. That's very well said. That's really well said. I got to clap for that. Ten Ten points for that, too? Ten billion points for that. Wow. Killing it. It I'm doesn't killing matter because the killing game's it. over, but hey, you, you can know, spend it for extra next credit, time. Extra credit. Extra credit. credit. Yeah. Extra credit. Yeah. Why do you think then that you're, as a K-12 teacher that the K-12's approach to education is special? Uh, I, I mean, it, it, it treats us as human beings. It, it treats education as not something separate. You know, oh, you go to a separate building to do school. And once you leave that, you're done with your school. Like, the world is here for us to experience and learn about. Like, you can't do that sitting in one seat your entire educational career. You need to get out and do things. Uh, you know, I've got students that uh, do archery. They do equestrian things. Uh, I've got students that uh, are learning woodworking skills and how to start a fire, um, you know, how to make a bow and arrow. Um, they're, they're, they're learning in all sorts of different ways. And the, the way that K-12 and Stride does this, it's a, it's a supplement. Like, we are going to provide the science, the math, the reading, uh, the social studies, all that core instruction that you need, but at your own pace, on your own schedule, and with the kind of balance so teachers can have time to grade papers and make connections with students and reach out to families and get their stories and see what they are interested in. And uh, that's, that's not something I could do at brick and mortar schools in the same way. So that work-life balance uh, and, and really treating education as a, a uniquely human endeavor. This is, this is something that's part of our life. It's not just something you do in one building for a few hours a day when you're a kid. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Matt, for putting your energy and your talent and your ability to beat up rocks here. <laughs> and thank you all out there for watching. Remember that learning happens everywhere. So stay curious. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and hit the little notification bell to see more of our episodes as soon as they happen. Keep watching.